on this episode of Exploration Outer Space. New worlds are being discovered in our solar system, but are they planets? Astronomers argued back and forth about what we should really call a planet and what we shouldn't call a planet. Now there's a new category, something called dwarf planets. Dwarf planets are incredibly interesting, as we're finding out. Join us as we explore our solar system and find out what makes a planet. Welcome to Exploration Outer Space. I'm Emily Kellandrelli. It really came as a shock to many when the International Astronomical Union decided to reclassify Pluto from a planet to a dwarf planet. Why did they do this? And what exactly is the definition of a planet? To find out these answers, we're going to the Adler Planetarium in Chicago. The Adler Planetarium, which sits on the shores of Lake Michigan, is the first planetarium ever built in the United States. Now it's a museum dedicated to astronomy. There are several exhibits inside, including one of special interest to me. What is a planet? When did astronomers first think about the question, what makes a planet? Well, it's more a question of uh, when did people first start thinking of planets as objects, planets as potential worlds. It was only in the 1600s when Galileo, turning a telescope to the planet Jupiter, to the planet Venus, noted that these things were disks. They were not just points of light that these were apparently worlds like our own. So he really opened up this doorway into understanding the universe. So what makes a planet? Originally, there were two main criteria. Number one, a planet has to orbit a star like the sun. And number two, it has to be big enough that its gravity has pulled its material into a mostly round shape. In 1930, a young astronomer named Clyde Tombaugh discovered a round object in the Kuiper belt orbiting around the sun. It turned out to be Pluto. And for the next 76 years, Pluto was considered the ninth planet in our solar system. Everybody assumed it was just a planet. They called it a planet, everybody was happy with that. But with the evolution of more powerful telescopes, astronomers began to discover even more objects on the outer edges of our solar system that were both round and orbited the sun. Astronomers had been faced with the question, if Pluto is a planet, does that mean that these things are planets as well? We would have had a situation in the future, potentially, where we could have dozens of planets in the solar system. So astronomers came up with their own definition. A planet has to orbit the sun. It has to be big enough that it's pulled itself into that mostly round shape. And number three, a planet has to have cleared its orbital neighborhood of other debris. And that was the third clause that was specifically excluding Pluto from planetary status. And that was the one that was accepted by vote at the conference in 2006. Clearing its orbital neighborhood sounds really complex. So what does that actually mean? To clear your orbital neighborhood of other debris, your gravity has to be significant enough that you can alter the orbits of these other objects and either bring them in and collide with you or send them off to a different part of the solar system. At the exhibit here, you'll find the latest definition of a planet. Yet there are still scientists who strongly disagree with this additional third clause, including Mark Hammergren. My thought is, why should what we call an object depend not on what it is, but where we happen to find it? If you saw a zebra running around with a herd of horses, it's still a zebra. You wouldn't call it something else just because it's in a particular neighborhood. I think it's a very poor definition. Now classified as a dwarf planet, Pluto is still an exotic world worth studying and exploring. <laughs>